Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Ajaz Ahmed, a common, well known commentator on international affairs. Ajaz, the recent shooting down of the Su 24 by, the, uh, by Turkey is a very worrying development because they are, the Turkey is a part of NATO, uh, Russia is a nuclear power. So, how do you explain what Turkey seems to have done? Well, for one thing, uh, now looking back, I would say two things. One, it seemed so outrageous that Turkey would do it on its own that I had first assumed, as soon as I heard it, I had first assumed that it did so upon U U.S. prompting. Because the Americans are also very worried about the fact that the Russians are not making a distinction between Daesh uh, the ISF, IL, or whatever one calls it, between uh, the, the uh, Islamic State and the other uh, jihadi groups. Uh, <clears throat> the, the Russians are saying they're all uh, terrorists and so on, whereas Americans uh, are making that kind of distinction. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, I thought it was an American prompting. It appears that it is not. Uh, they might have used Amer the intelligence given to them by the Americans, they might have done whatever. So my uh, sense is that it's a very peculiar moment for Erdogan, where he, on, on the one hand he has the arrogance of having recaptured that majority in Turkey at home and therefore feeling that he can do whatever he wants and he'll take the country along with him, and a moment of panic, because unless something dramatic happens, uh, that little strip through which Turkey still controls uh, the, tra the, the routes into, and where Turkish intelligence and Turkish um, really special forces are active, um, they, they're on the verge of losing it. And that's a supply route to Jabahat al-Nusra, which is the Al-Qaeda affiliate, as well as IS. Uh, yes, yes, of course, to, to all of them. And th that is the other part about uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Turks is that they are taking pretty much the Saudi Sora position, in which all these jihadis uh, need to be supplied, uh, without exception. Americans, as usual, are bungling. Increasingly now, there is evidence accumulating to show that in the early period, Americans not only knew what was going on when uh, this uh, uh, Daesh was about to be launched, but uh, that uh, secretly and uh, uh, consciously, they also supported the Daesh, and later on sort of withdrew from it. Uh, but anyway, uh, Turkey, not only their supply lines, their actual Turkish personnel, intelligence networks, special forces fighting alongside these people, Th those supplies coming in, all of that, the fantasy of a five kilometer no fly zone over Syria, you shoot down a Russian aircraft, and Russians don't have to uh, to concede anything in terms of airspace to you, and so on. So, why he has done it at this time, I look at it as a peculiar combination of arrogance and overplaying your hand, and panic. One clear issue post-Paris attack has been that France has been arguing there should be a coalition including Russia against Daesh. That's been the position that France seemed to be taking. And the US seems to be much more ambivalent about it, talking about Bashar al-Assad must go, not talking anything beyond Jabahat al-Nusra being a terrorist organization, not Ahral al-Shams and all the other splinter groups, which are a part of the uh, Nusra-led front. So distinguishing between them seems to be spurious. But the US had been taking that kind of position. Do you think Turkey was therefore worried that Russia being admitted into this coalition means 
that actually their uh, whole line of separating uh, Bashar al-Assad and the, that Bashar al-Assad has to go, all that position would collapse and actually the Syrian army would also be a part of the coalition. By the way, the French uh, foreign minister said that, that Syrian Arab army can also be a part of the coalition, though has hedged it by saying, but only after Bashar al-Assad goes. So there is that kind of uh, ambiguity. But his initial statement was, yes, even the Saudi, uh, Syrian Arab army can be a part of this, out of this anti IS force. Do you think that therefore he is trying to really prevent this realignment from happening? Well, he is trying to, 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 to prevent, uh, but um, I think yes, in terms of uh, uh, France, uh, the, uh, the attack in Paris has made a lot of difference. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that it is the very bold decision that Putin made and the scale at which they made an entry into the battlefield. And therefore, um, in, in terms of international law, they are the only ones who have a legitimate position of intervention. He has come in absolutely clearly stating, I'm going to, to drive them out. And I don't make a distinction between Al Qaeda and Daesh. Okay. <clears throat> it is the change on the battleground. The fact that that air cover that the Russians gave made it possible for the Syrian army to start capturing territory from from IS as well as uh, from any other of the, these jihadi groups. That I think is, 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 is creating these effects where positions keep shifting day after day. Within a couple of days, the US retreats a little more. Now they are saying they, uh, Bashar al-Assad can stay for six months. Now they are saying the only problem is that the Saudis won't agree to it. Soon enough, the six-month business will also drop. Um, <clears throat> so it, it is that the, the Russians have, have said, we want your cooperation, but we are going to, going to do it anyway. You say you are the, you're their enemies, so let us cooperate. Now the other part of it is that Russia has also produced proof, if, if there was necess that is a necessity, of Turkish buying oil from Daesh, long kilometers long convoys of trucks fl yes. flying between yes. Yes. Turkey and uh, this visual. Daesh, yeah. this which Rush Americans had not bombed till date. Right. They only claimed to bomb it after Russians bombed them. And as some people have pointed out, even the videos are Russian videos, which they are saying, this is our bombing. So there is this whole issue that the, vi that Ameri the Turkish were very much in bed with Daesh in terms of oil supplies. Uh, taking oils for oil supplies from them, and uh, apparently it's very senior officials of in Turkey are involved, including Erdogan's son. That's what is being talked of. Bilal Erdogan apparently is a part of this, but we don't know the details of it. Uh, do, do you think that this has also angered Turkey in its response? Uh, everything is is angering them uh, because their uh, field of operation is getting narrower and narrower. And on the question of this uh, oil supply is going to, to Turkey and so on, this has been an open secret. Uh, <clears throat> the Russians chose until now not to divulge what they know. In the last meeting of the G20, he openly said, Putin openly said, that we know that some of our, uh, some of the people sitting here in this room um, have been supporting ISIS. Uh, they are the ones who have divulged this evidence now, visual evidence, uh, and that the fact that the Americans never bombed that, which was so obviously the target, uh, shows up not only Turkey as buying it, but Americans making it possible for them to buy it. You know, um, they, 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 could have, they could have bombed these. Um, all the all, all the all this time. 
um, they haven't. Uh, so um, Americans are actually being showed up in that sense as well. As well. And uh, all of them are in great confusion. Um, Cameron says uh, <coughs> the, 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 the British military says that unless you have people on the ground, we should not go. Uh, it's the old thing that the American uh, uh, generals told Bush um, before the Iraq war, uh, that unless you are willing to put 500,000 uh, troops on the ground, you can't do it. Uh, now Cameron is being told. So Cameron is saying that we have 70,000 uh, troops fighting on our side. But, you, but he can't tell you who these 70,000 are who are fighting on your side. And what is your side itself and, is the question. your side. So, you know, every single person uh, in, uh, who's, who is in Al-Qaeda on the planet seems to be one of those 70,000. <laughs> you know, where are those 70,000? And so on. So there is a panic. The only country in which I think there is no panic is Germany. Germany, I think, decided much earlier that they had to deal with the reality and sooner or later you had to deal with the Bashar al-Assad government. And especially now after the refugees, their response has been, we'll take as many refugees as we possibly can, but the way to stop it is to stop the war. It's also interesting the Stoltenberg <coughs> the Secretary General yeah. of NATO, he talked about Daesh being the enemy. He didn't mention Al-Qaeda. That was an interesting Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, so, so do the Americans. I mean, Americans don't say, uh, none of them says Al-Qaeda is the enemy. Al-Qaeda are the people they, they're supplying uh, arms. Uh, arms to. And what they don't tell you is that those arms actually go, many of those arms actually go to Daesh that even the distinction between Daesh and Al-Qaeda is a very, you know, precarious sort of distinction. Yes, organizationally they are different, but people, you know, these are not standard armies. People move back and forth. And even groups move A lot of money forth. is involved. Daesh is flush with money. It can offer members of the various Al-Qaeda affiliated groups money to come over with their weapons, etc. So all of that is going on. And these people have a pub, they all know it, but they have a public posture as if none of it exists. You know, the Kurds, particularly the YPG, YPG who's been uh, really creating their space on the southern border of Turkey, the northern part of uh, Syria, they now need about 70 kilometers between the Afrin and That's the right. Rojave right, right. Uh, enclaves to really join together. Then they have a contiguous right entire border would be then the Kurdish border, except the really northwestern part of Latakia. That's the only part that would still be there, which is where Turkey has been claiming Turkman and we are the protectors and so on. But if that happens, it really dries up the total uh, route or for the IS and uh, Jabahat al-Nusra. This has been the main supply route. So do you think now that under Russian cover, YPG could also start taking over the space? Because the Turks had threatened them with uh, various uh, dire consequences if they moved east of, uh, west of uh, Euphrates. Well, you know, much depends on what the Russians decide over the next couple of days. <clears throat> they haven't sh really shown their hand in terms of what their overall response to this event is going to be. But the way they have been doing things, it is clear that there's a lot of consideration going on into decision making, but that some decisions are yet to be made or, or taken to the stage of implementation, shall we say. I will not be surprised if the Russians actually start extending real air cover to the YPG. 
and actually expedite th this process of their taking over those 70 kilometers to Abdi. Uh, I won't be surprised because now after what Turkey has done and the inability of the Tur Turkey's friends to restrain Turkey, after this gloves have to be off. And if you are in, Russians must also be seeing that four to six weeks when the uh, bid for ceasefire comes in, territory is the issue. <clears throat> now, very interestingly, we don't know how far Russians are going to press it. So all of that is, is being geared up. Um, I think there will be increased military engagement by the Russians. So you see this as really Ed Erdogan overreaching what uh, he, you know, was trying to do. It's an overreach and it's going to boomerang on him. This is I, the way you do this situation. Yes, yes. And the combination is, is arrogance, panic, and miscalculation as to how uh, the Americans would, would behave. It, it, he also doesn't realize that uh, Obama is not fighting another elections. Yeah, he, has no he, he has no stakes in, you know, madness. Um, he doesn't have to play it to the militarist gallery uh, in, you know, beyond what he himself is already capable of, but, be, but he can't be pushed into it and, uh, now. And you also anticipated, you also anticipate within the next four to six weeks, there would be real serious peace talks to bring at least some kind of stability in Syria? Would that, 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 that's, that's what seems to be the cal calculation all around. Uh, because uh, the horizon that seems to be emerging, uh, and this uh, partly you, you can see in FARS agencies' uh, uh, coverage of these things, and the horizon seems to be that another four, six, at the most two months, uh, they're, they're projecting some kind of a move towards the ceasefire, so that by the summer, uh, actual negotiations uh, over the formation of the next government uh, <coughs> would be in place and uh, elections next year. That's a very, that would be a very important development. Yeah. Just really a pleasure to talk to you and we'll keep on following with you the developments in West Asia, particularly Syria. Thank right. You.